U.S. political scientist Graham Allison said in an interview with the Global Times that he applauded the Biden administration's current search for a conception of the rise of China, a challenge that recognizes China as simultaneously both a fierce rival and an inescapable partner. His views show the kind of China-U.S. relationship that the Biden administration is aiming for. The U.S. seeks both containment and cooperation in its China policy. The U.S. direly needs China's cooperation to deal with major global challenges such as terrorism, global financial crises and climate change. But when it comes to issues such as values and development models, the U.S. must compete with China and win. The U.S. wishful calculation is this. When it comes to global issues that require China's cooperation, China is a partner. However, when it comes to issues related to international power, social systems, and development paths that do not meet the expectations of the U.S., China is a rival. In this calculation, the U.S. completely ignores China's feelings and national interests. It is totally hegemonic. Decades-long unremitting efforts and peaceful development have brought China to the center of the world stage. China has played a globally influential role and made great contributions in global governance. The U.S. is unable to view China and point fingers at China in a condescending manner anymore. Allison argued that the U.S. new security partnership with the U.K. and Australia and deeper engagement with Quad is an essential part of an approach to create a coalition of forces that can shape China's behavior by attracting other nations with heft to sit on the U.S. side of the seesaw of power. Apparently, U.S. elites are still viewing China-U.S. relations in a condescending manner. They think the U.S. should shape China's behavior, rather than have dialogues with China on an equal footing. The hegemonic status long held by the U.S. means Washington will never allow any country or group of countries in any region of the world to challenge the U.S. hegemony. But such a wish has to face harsh realities. The U.S. cannot tolerate any challenger, but it has to turn to allies' help to safeguard its hegemony due to inadequate strength of its own. The return of Huawei CFO Meng Wanzhou on Saturday is a phased success of China's diplomacy. China's consistent struggles eventually made the U.S. compromise on this issue. This could provide some lessons for the U.S. to deal with China relations. The release of Meng might leave some room for bilateral relations to ease, but this window of opportunity does not mean a complete thaw. Bilateral relations will continue to feature both competition and cooperation, with some mild improvements expected in the short term. Through half a century's engagement and cooperation, China and the U.S. have solved many global issues, including counterterrorism, global financial crisis and climate change. If China-U.S. relations are to restart, the premise is that the U.S. adjusts its unrealistic hegemonic policies. It must engage in positive interactions with China, or the temporary thaw will only become the prelude of a larger-scale conflict. The U.S. should display its sincerity and consider mutual concerns instead of unilaterally raising demands and imposing sanctions on China. As two major powers responsible for the world, China and the U.S. should avoid confrontation, especially man-made confrontation. The release of Meng makes people see some hope that China and the U.S. can avoid conflicts. But China should not pin all its hopes that the U.S. will not indulge in high-stakes mischief again. Nonetheless, even if the U.S. insists on its containment policy, China's sustainable development cannot be stopped.